Hi. The, um, from the last video, you learned that uh, TSH production is increased when thyroid hormones decline. Uh, there's a second cause of elevated TSH, uh, which uh, most people, uh, actually most physicians, don't know about, and that I came across by accident. But uh, it's a very, very important um, uh, thing to understand and um, another part of this first phase of how to reduce TSH and thereby reduce thyroid inflammation. So let's look at thyroid stimulating hormone and its action upon thyroid cells. How, how does TSH stimulate? What are the ways that uh, TSH stimulates thyroid cells? So remember that it's iodide that's absorbed into the iodide traps ready uh, for ready to be converted into iodine when the thyroid cell wants or is stimulated by TSH. So remember hydrogen peroxide produced by the thyroid cell is what helps to convert or what does convert iodide to iodine and it's TSH that stimulates the thyroid cell to increase its production of hydrogen peroxide. Very simple, very straightforward. Th uh, thyroid cells have in their membrane these iodide traps, what are called sodium iodide symports or channels um, that uh, uh, absorb iodide. TSH stimulates or upregulates these iodide traps so that iodide is absorbed and so that once it's converted to iodine it can produce its thyroid hormones. So TSH is, again, remember that TSH is stimulated when thyroid hormones decline. But also, the production of TSH is stimulated when we uh, take higher doses of iodide <clears throat> and iodine. Here's a report, a lab report, on a 53-year-old woman. You can see here that TSH level is 3.56. Um, that's a little bit higher than optimal. <clears throat> should be around 2.0. So this tells us that her pituitary is producing more than normal or more than optimal amounts of TSH and Y. Look at the thyrox in our T4 at 6.1. If you look at the range on the right side of that, it says 4.5 to 12. So 6.1 is on the lower side of optimal, optimal being around 8 or 8.5. So um, according, accordingly, the pituitary is sensing there's not quite enough uh, thyroid uh, hormone. I'm going to increase my level of TSH trying to stimulate that thyroid cell, the thyroid cells to make more thyroid hormones. So my thinking at that time was let's just feed her thyroid gland with more iodide and iodine. So we put her on 25 milligrams, a combination of iodide and iodine, which is a, a, a high dose, but according to the belief of some physicians that are... Um, encouraging people to take high doses for a number of reasons. Um, we gave her the 25 milligrams and look what happens. Six months later, her TSH is 107. So you can see, and this is all we did with this woman, we just gave her this product of iodide and iodine, trying to nourish or stimulate her thyroid gland to make more, more thyroid hormones. But you can see here that iodide and iodine stimulate the production of TSH and we don't want in Hashimoto's we don't want higher TSH we want to get it down below 1 maybe 0.5 to decrease the the production of hydrogen peroxide so from this example we see that increased levels of iodide will increase levels of TSH which as you know by now is going to stimulate the thyroid cells to make more hydrogen peroxide which is going to lead to thyroid inflammation. So there's a dilemma here. The dilemma here is that when a person has low levels of iodide, their thyroid hormones are going to decline, TSH will go up, increasing hydrogen peroxide production and increasing thyroid inflammation. And the other side of that coin is that we know also that increased iodide 
will increase TSH levels, again increasing hydrogen peroxide, increasing thyroid inflammation. Remember the primary goal in the first phase of reducing thyroid inflammation is to reduce levels of TSH. But how? The only way is to increase thyroid hormones. If we can improve the levels of thyroid hormones, TSH will decline. But we can't take iodide. If we take iodide, it's going to increase TSH. But the thyroid gland cannot produce thyroid hormones unless it has iodide. But I'll explain uh, in the next presentation how we can improve thyroid hormones to bring down TSH without taking iodide. So as you might imagine, I was pretty horrified when I received this lady's lab work back and saw a TSH of over 107, but it, it was probably one of the most important moments of my life because I realized that a lot of the research <clears throat> that I'd been um, subjected to uh, was only half the truth. And I'm extremely conservative now with the use of iodide and iodine, even for people that don't have Hashimoto's. I had one patient who I tested ahead of time. She was negative for Hashimoto's. We retested her after three months of being on the iodide and iodine supplement, and she was then uh, Hashimoto's positive. So I'm not saying that uh, there's a problem with high dosing. I'm just saying that people have to be a, a little cautious at first. They should be doing follow-up lab tests to confirm that they don't have Hashimoto's before using high doses uh, and also using lots of selenium for protecting the thyroid from inflammation. So again, we're trying to reduce inflammation as much as possible in this first, uh, first stage. Uh, first stage of treatment um, by, um, by the antioxidants and also by reducing TSH. So this next video is on the use of pharmacy, which is probably very important for most people. I know there's a bit of resistance about prescriptions, but um, go ahead to the next video on treating Hashimoto's using pharmacy to add some uh, little bit of clarification on why it's so important. <laughs>